Welcome <laughs> to another Orchid Chores Diary. Okay, lots of work to do. The other day when I was putting the garbage bags around the Vandas, I had a look-see at my green hopper in the deep south there. And because of the humidity factor boosting, blah -dee blah I figured I'm going to put a garbage bag around that orchid as well. It seems to be struggling again. In doing so, I saw that the baskets had broken by the weight of the berry odor that was then put there as well for a little bit of protection. And the whole thing is sliding into the hedge. It's not going to be long before they completely crack and we're going to have a problem on our hands. These baskets have served me well. In the past, they stored all my inorganic media as I was flushing out bags and bags and bags of lecker and lava rock. I just put all that into these baskets and then took to them with a hose before doing the minutia work in the kitchen of sifting through and boiling and sterilizing and storing my new lecker in water. It was a massive undertaking and these baskets served me very well for that purpose. In the initial phase of getting my inorganic media sorted out, cleaned up from the major amount of dust. That was about four years ago, maybe four and a half years now, but anyway, they are not UV <laughs> compatible. I don't know what I was thinking as to how long this would last. Here we are in 2022. It's time to take care of that corner and make sure that the orchids don't end up in the hedge and cause bigger issues. Before I do that though, the top shelf of my blooming alley is empty and all the orchids up there are soaking in calcium and magnesium and they are on my staging area behind me. So I thought before my heart starts racing with all the effort and the moving, especially of that massive pot over there, it has to go back up into the corner of the west side. Oh heavy thing. Uh, yeah, I thought it's best. Let's do an update of the top shelf orchids that are soaking that are now at eye level and then we'll go on to getting that deep south re-established before something dramatic happens. Okay, update time. Let's go. Let's start with the Oncostello Wildcat Golden Red Star. I had a second spike growing on a second growth, but that frazzled out thanks to a nasty, nasty spring. Not enough light, it just died and collapsed within itself. No problem, don't mind as long as the orchid is alive and I have two new growths coming, which is great. Good, decent calcium and magnesium blitz soak and it can go back on the top shelf after I have done the deep south. Zygonesia Murasaki Komachi. Huge disappointment this year and I thought I was going to lose this orchid. I had already made my peace with it, but here we are. This itty bitty little growth here <laughs> has formed the tiniest of pseudobulbs. Not exactly impressive and it didn't bloom this year either. Just wondering if the horrible spring had an effect on that one as well. Don't know. It's alive still. We'll see for how long. Definitely not impressed with this one. Here is Bretonia Shiloh of Tolkien that I got from Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents. Growing new roots, starting a new growth. So I've been preening and pruning away. Now that this sheath is nice and soggy from the soak, it can come off very easily without damaging the new growth. It's doing fine. I was hoping to get a little bit more roots out of the base of this growth, but oh well, give me what you got and I'll take care of the rest. Is this sheath already good to come off as well? Yeah, I've been having my snips around, checking for old spikes, removing them and all that fun stuff. See, these sheaths are very, very tough and best to remove when the base is a little bit soaked. So while we're at it, let's do that because if this starts to dry out again, I will have missed the mark. Check this out. We can remove this old spike now as well, even further down the base. There we go. Alisiara Peggy Ruth Carpenter. Whoa, I completely missed the mark on this one. Her microfibers were dry, 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 dry. Almost succulent-like setup. It was terrible. I had completely forgotten how thirsty this orchid is when she is in active growth. And you can see the pseudobulbs are shriveled because of how dry 
that pot was. Anyway, a good CalMag and seaweed soak will do this orchid a world of good growing roots, starting on another growth right here and maturing a growth in the back here. I was kind of hoping to get another growth, but hey, she underwent a massive division process last year or so in recovery and just getting her bearings again. Uh, that was a close call. This orchid cannot dry out at any point in time when it comes to active growth. I think we got there in time. I've seen my pseudobulbs in much, much worse condition. So apart from a quick slap on my own wrists, <laughs> we got away with it. This is my Ophiocleides spathylofera. Huh, true to form, I cannot get a back bulb, an older bulb to hold onto its leaves. During the spring, it lost its leaves again. That leaf loss was a little premature for my liking, to be honest. I was freaked out. I had lost the orchid and had resorted to saying, well, thank you, spring. Thanks, but no thanks. But still, here we are, new growth, and it's looking fine. It doesn't look like it's going to be anything sizable, but she is alive with this new growth. She will also develop new roots. I am contemplating changing the setup for this orchid not in Lekka and self-watering, but more of a terrestrial cactus mix. So I'm thinking that with a lot of sand, and I'm thinking that when I see new roots on this growth, we're going to go down that route and see if she will do any better for me. Zygopetalum trozy blue bloomed. Happy days, really pleased. And you can see that the subsequent growth is now <coughs> matured. <laughs> um, yeah. <clears throat> it still looks like a brand new growth, but uh, I don't have a pseudobulb to speak of here, but it's already growing its next new growth. So, hey, you do you, boo. I'm not complaining, but it's a darn slight better than the Zygonesia Morosaki Komachi. Living on the top shelf of my blooming alley is also my Catlia Bicolor Brasiliense, producing a beautiful new growth. Really happy to see that. It's going to produce a wonderful root system. It has a great root system from last year in the pot. It's only been with me about a year now. So this orchid is just on the way of maturing. It's going to take some time, but doing well. So, so pleased. No issues at all with this one. Here we have the Oncidium Melissa Brianne Dark. Well, I have dark on my label. It is not dark. Mine has a little bit of a white flare on the blooms. This was a no ID from me for a long time until I saw Julie's orchids with her Melissa Brianne and I was like, I think <laughs> she's got the dark. I don't have the dark. So that's where I drew my conclusions that this is just the regular Melissa Brianne. But she bloomed on four spikes and is taking forever to absorb the old spikes. I'm leaving them on. This morning I cut off the first dried spike, but two new growths as per usual, as is standard with this one. And hopefully without having any RO water supply issues this year, I can get these bulbs to grow back the size that they should be, as opposed to the puny little ones that I managed to grow last year when my RO system packed up and I was struggling to water orchids. Unfortunately, I had to make priorities and say those needed most. This one, yeah, that was a very difficult choice to make, but seeing as she's a rescue orchid, and <laughs> I know this sounds harsh, but she wasn't at the top of my priority last year when it came to surviving or doing superbly. Other orchids really ranked much higher, but I hope to recover that this year, as long as my water supply continues the way it does. My beautiful Purdy Caulathrum bicornutum here from the Orchid Room. I have to say that I was so happy to see a spike forming. I couldn't believe it. It was forming during the dark and horrible spring and I was like, girl, you are resilient, way to go. She was in the process of forming two blooms, not something to write home about, I know, but considering the circumstances and she was spiking, I was, oh, wow. Then <laughs> enter a draft and the buds had formed and were ready to bloom out and the whole spike collapsed. It literally frazzled. One day it was there, the next day I went to check if the blooms had opened and it had turned completely brown, which was a massive disappointment. But anyway, this orchid is precious to me. She's doing great getting her CalMag and seaweed soak because I'm trying to encourage a new growth now sooner rather than later. 
Here is the recovery growth from the orchid when she came to me, the first little growth that she grew. And we were doing a lot of light training because I had to lean her into the pot at an angle so that the new growth, those roots would just hit the media straight away. And then we grew this one last year and I thought it's gonna be a beautiful blooming. It turned out not to be the case, but now we can grow another growth and hope for better conditions come spring 2023. My poor Lee Dia Catlia Chantilly Lace Twinkle, I'm still fighting for this orchid is in the process of branching a root system. I don't see any signs of this orchid wanting to start a new growth. She's been very, very poorly from the day she arrived in my collection. I'm not gonna say anything, but I'm just gonna <clears throat> hold up the tag and consider that part of the reason. The rest can of course be also me or the setup, but until she doesn't completely collapse, uh, I don't think it's the setup anyway. At least she's branching on a, the root system and, well, we'll just have to wait and see what she does next if she's going to give me a growth. Still poorly. Nothing to write home about for what a Chantilly Lace Twinkle can normally do. Then you have this gorgeous little Potinara Chansey Golden Orange Golden Boy that I also got from Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents in my collection. Not even a year she matured this growth here. We have a little sheath. I just think it's a teaser sheath, but we're already on the way with another new growth and nice root system in the pot, not quite rooted in, but hardly something I can expect considering when she was potted up, we were heading into winter and then of course, horrible spring, haha. <laughs> Here we are, nice little CalMag soak, new growth. I think we're gonna be okay with this one. To be honest with you, if that sheath wants to bloom, I'm not gonna let it. This orchid is precious to me and well, if I let it bloom now, I don't want to stop its process with the new growth, with the new roots. It's going to stop all of that. So if that sheath starts to get a bud in it, I'm going to wait for it to be a little bit more long enough before I cut it off because uh-uh-uh, no way, Jose. It's doing well though, and I'm really happy about that. And here we have Dendrobium hibiki, running a little bit late in the season, I have to say, but better late than never. And it's not gonna be one of those big mass cluster blooming shows that I am accustomed to by this orchid in the past. The clusters are a lot more spread out as opposed to bunching up on the nodes. This orchid has been doing a lot of growing in the past, so all the canes that are supposed to bloom profusely on node after node after node, they are not going to be blooming this year, they'll be blooming next year. So what we're getting here are the remnants of canes that have bloomed in the past, and then a node that hasn't bloomed out yet has become active. So it'll be nice to see the blooms a little bit more spread out, even though we're not gonna get that high impact wow factor that I have been spoiled with by my hibiki in the past years. But wow, <laughs> I'm just so happy that <sighs> I can't wait to see these hot pink blooms again. And I do believe that next year we are gonna have our flip-flops blown off again by a mass spectacular bunched up cluster blooming. Here's my Prasabola cordata, Xingying. Because she just bloomed out, let's say, two months ago, there's not much happening. That's why just some Calmac and some seaweed to encourage her to do something, please. It would be nice to do it while the weather is nice. Don't delay it. Don't put me through that again in the spring, seeing you grow a new growth and then struggle. But anyway, not doing anything, not even new roots, just waiting for a new growth. This is my Procatavola Golden Peacock, which is one of my favorite orchids because in the years since she's arrived in my collection, she has been blooming and blooming and blooming and blooming. It is the first time that I am starved of Procatavola blooms and well, she did not appreciate that spring at all. She really struggled through it. She also had a bit of mealybugs around Christmas time. We dealt with those. Nothing has developed since. I have remnants of old scale bodies in here. They're all history. It's just 
effect of her getting her reset on and I am very very surprised that she is taking this long to recover from a massive intervention and division process where I literally stepped on the pot to release the root ball. At the time I wasn't thinking of my hammer. <laughs> I resorted just to stepping on the pot and rolling it around underneath my foot. I don't think she appreciated that and she's telling me that in no <laughs> uncertain terms. However, we have two new growths growing that is fabulous so there's one here one here and a new root system developing and if she keeps it up like this you know i'm gonna have to intervene again next year because she is just a vigorous root grower which is wonderful but in my setup it really needs to have the root ball clean then on a regular basis and if she's just starting to snap out of the previous intervention it may be a while before we see what we saw in the early years of my channel. I'm just glad that she is picking up. There's a very floppy leaf in the back here. I'm not used to her doing that at all. So I'm just supporting it behind another leaf. Uh, that's sort of a little bit of a concern. Maybe a bit of calcium and magnesium will help her get her grow on. And then we have here my Brassocatlia binosa Wabash Valley. Didn't like my spring at all. Don't blame it. I'm totally with her on that one. I didn't like it either. Only getting one new growth at this point in time. And also had a massive division taken out of it two years ago. The second lead is not showing me anything. I probably have to intervene in this pot even before the orchid gets its vigor back either give it a bigger pot because it's also a very vigorous root grower and you know every two years intervening it might not be such a good idea for this one we'll have to wait and see i think it's just having an issue with the fact that quite a bit of it was chopped off at least one lead is growing that means new roots if necessary i will go in and intervene when the new roots start but while filling the pot, everything is giving me signs that it's okay in here. I've got the gargling and the bubbles and all that stuff going on. I had to also top up the pot and you can see the water has receded again. So yeah, I probably won't see these star-shaped bloom until very, very late in the season, if at all. I would prefer the second lead to grow another new growth and no blooms. That would be my personal preference. <laughs> Watch this space. Recently repotted, fantastic, really pleased how well that repot went. <laughs> this is my Epicatantha Gold Coast, Sun Kiss, new growth, everything's fine. It didn't really need a CalMag soak, but just for the principle of doing the whole top shelf, I included it with the soak and it certainly is not going to do it any harm. New growth is developing nicely. The orchid still gets flushed on a regular basis just to make sure that that gorgeous root ball that we saw in the repot video, that that stays intact. And here is my Coilo stylus ciliaris. I am so thrilled to see these spikes again, I cannot tell you. Spikes and buds on both growths. Oh, happy, happy days. However, I am going to interfere. The pot, you see, is so brittle on the rim. One of my bleach candidates and it is totally compromised. Freaks me out every time I touch this pot. I have a certain way of touching a pot. I have to constantly remind myself to grab it at the mask level because, <laughs> yeah, if that thing fell out of my hand because of a crack in the rim, then I would be very, very upset. I have new roots growing in the pot. It is now or not at all. So we are going to intervene even if I forfeit the blooms. But fingers crossed, this orchid looks to have plenty of energy that she can handle what I'm about to do with it. Not in this video, but in a separate video, we will go and have a look-see and then monitor to see if the blooms develop. And I'm already like, oh, please, please don't blast. <laughs> so that was my blitz update on the orchids on the top shelf of my blooming alley. At least I hope it was blitz enough. If you have any questions about these orchids, of course, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to elaborate on them further. I just wanted to get to over there <laughs> also because of the angle of the sun the angracoids when i'm working there will have a little bit of sun exposure but the breeze is cool enough i think we should be okay so let's get those baskets out before it really becomes a problem Oh. 
There we go. <laughs> that should do it. I timed myself. It took me in real time 11 minutes to do this, <laughs> except I cheated. I haven't put the pot back into the corner just yet. Of course, I'm going to do that because yeah, that was heavy. <laughs> that was heavy. Anyway, that should do it. I have bought four pots of the same size. It makes it a little bit more cohesive. If it wasn't for this high tech umbrella, I swear I can recommend this one to you. Found at every dollar store, perfect for shading your plants. <laughs> Adding a little touch of class to any corner of your garden. But if it wasn't for that and the chair, it's a little bit more au naturel. Got it all done within the time frame that the angrecoids were not yet hit by direct sun. Look, it wouldn't make a difference for two or three minutes. However, they have been through so much. I don't want to necessarily try and see how much I can get away with, especially now that it's around lunchtime and no wind. So there's nothing here to cool them off. Now I can go spray a little bit. Cousin It is looking fabulous. Let me just say Cousin It has now changed his stage name for a little while. He is called Rod Stewart because of the punky, spiky, upright growth gives him that Rod Stewart vibe. I'm sure that if he went to some kind of a competition to impersonate Rod Stewart, he would do pretty, pretty well. I've already flushed the Garen Weaver in the back left. Dendrobium berry odor, yay. Six growths from what I can see. That's great. The last time we looked at her, it was three. I was hoping for at least two more. I've put my Epidendrum Stamfordianum exactly where I can foliar spray, which I'm doing every day, every time I spray the Vandas. So the Stamfordianum is going to get hit every time I'm there with the Rinko Stylus cross with Vanda Cerula because, of course, there's nothing much happening with that orchid. It is starting to grow some new roots out of nowhere, pretty much. And of course, green hopper looking fancy in its little garbage bag jacuzzi. <laughs> I'm glad I got this done. I was a little bit worried the day I saw it and I thought this is not a project that I can procrastinate on because with the strong wind, any small breeze, boom, those baskets could have collapsed completely. Anyway, they're off to the recycling now. And the top of my blooming alley, the shelf has been re-established and maybe I can move to the next shelf in a little while. But I just heard the alarm of my RO system. <laughs> My egg timer has gone off, got to change some buckets. So I'm going to love and leave you. I'm going to say thank you so very, very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video, bit of an update. And uh, maybe you heard me grunting in the background. <laughs> Whew, orchid chores, hey? Not that I do this every day, but I can't film every single orchid chores that I am doing. Just some things that may be a little bit more of interest. So really appreciate your time. Have yourselves a beautiful day. As always, though, please, on one condition that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.